it was a, a really good session and it, and it covered predominantly um, um, nerve stimulation techniques. So, so brain modulation or nervous system modulation or brain stimulation, however you want to, to term it. And these are things that have been under investigation for a long time because we know that some of them, such as um, um, direct current stimulation, so transcranial direct current stimulation and magnetic stimulation, they have been shown to have effects on learning and task-specific learning. So the obvious question then becomes, well, can we apply that to task-specific recovery after stroke? So we know that these brain modulation techniques do have effects on the brain, and we know that we can measure them in psychology research, we can measure them in young adults, you know, and various things. But the question really is whether or not we can use these techniques to drive improving outcome after stroke. And there is one of these techniques, which is vagus nerve stimulation. Um, so we implant a, a, a stimulator that stimulates the vagus nerve on the left-hand side of the neck, which then communicates with the brain, has been shown to cause a small, but I think important, improvement in functional recovery in the upper limb after ischemic stroke. So this is the first time that one of these techniques has been shown in a pivotal study, so an adequately powered and designed study, to have an effect, a measurable effect on stroke patients. And it has just received FDA approval. So that is um, huge news um, in, in the field. Now, I should declare a conflict of interest. I was the chief, oh, I didn't speak on that topic. I was the chief investigator for the human studies. So obviously, you know, it, it's an area that I've been involved in for some time. Alongside that, we, we discussed um, two other techniques which aren't designed for upper limb recovery. Um, one was um, use of, of nerve stimulation technologies to improve swallowing after stroke, and one was stimulating an area of the brain called the sphenopalatine ganglion, which is designed to increase blood flow following an acute stroke. And both of these techniques have very promising data, um, no definitive data as yet, but clearly signals from the studies that have been done and from the postdoc analyses that there is, is merit in the techniques that require further studies. So I think there's excitement in that we have one technique that's been shown to work and we have a number of other techniques which look very promising and it may just be that we're finally getting to the point where these things start to break through into clinical practice as you know happened recently with thrombectomy for example there were lots of neutral trials and nobody could really understand why these things that should work weren't working and then eventually you know, they're done in the correct way and, and they do have very important effects. So I think there's a conference that we're on the kind of um, start of that wave in stroke recovery that we're going to start to see real advances in the next five or 10 years in, in technologies to, to improve recovery.